I've had a lot of people asking lately how I set up the ambient light system for my sim rig. And part of the reason they're asking is because it's not your typical ambient lighting system. Instead of using one of the pre-build options, I've actually used three LED matrix and an LED strip to make a more customized lighting experience inside my rig. And today I'm going to go through a tutorial on how to set that up. Now, this isn't the first tutorial I've done on this. Previously, I did a tutorial just with a couple light strips and showed like a basic setup. Since then, the setup's gotten a bit more complicated, and I think an in-depth, detailed tutorial makes sense because it's not exactly the same as the previous video. So if you guys saw that one, a lot of this is going to make sense to you. If not, don't worry about it because I'm going to go over everything fairly quickly that I had already previously gone over. But before we jump into uh, the diagram that I'm going to show you guys on how to wire this thing up, let me show you a little onboard POV that you could see how the lighting impacts the inside of the rig as I go through a tunnel and come out of it. Alright, so as you guys noticed in the video, inside the tunnel, the cabin was quite a bit brighter than coming out of the tunnel. Now that's just based on the settings that I currently have it on. I can make it more sensitive to the light changes, less sensitive. Lighting could be more intense or less intense. And I'm using an auto setting that kind of switches between day and night and it detects it. And that's still kind of an experimental thing. So... The software doesn't necessarily process it as quick as it should, and I have a lot better results if I just switch between day and night depending on which one I'm currently on. So let's talk about how to wire this thing up. Let's jump over to the diagram. All right, so the easiest way to see this is to split it up into two sections. You've got your brain and your power. So between the computer and the Arduino, that pretty much makes up your brain. That's going to tell the lights what to do. The only thing is you have to power those lights that comes in in a separate section. So this here is just your USB connected directly to your PC and into your Arduino board. This other one is going to be another USB with an open ended red and black wire at the end connected to a power block and into the wall. Don't connect the open ended wire to the wall until you're done wiring. Just a suggestion. It, it should only be 5 volts, no more, but nonetheless, you don't want to electrocute yourself, and I will not be responsible for anybody who chooses to wire this up while the power is plugged in. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about wiring the power section of this. So here you can see, coming off of the power, going into the LED matrix and the LED strip. So if you were to imagine my setup, Here's my 264 LED matrix. This would be the 255 LED matrix and my 30 LED strip. Each one has dedicated auxiliary power. So I'm going to power directly into the auxiliaries on all four of these so that each one is getting its own power source from the USB and not feeding off of another one. Ultimately, it would probably all work out the same if one fed to the next, but I chose to just wire them directly. All my stuff is using those connectors so I can connect and disconnect wherever needed and swap out boards and everything else. Now moving on to the data processing side of it. You're going to have running from your Arduino board to your data in each of these is a data in line for your LEDs. So we'll take pin five here. Pin five runs down to the LED strip and uh, ground wire runs down to the LED strip. Pin six runs directly into the 255 LED matrix with a ground wire. And pin seven runs directly to one of the two 64 LED matrix with another ground wire running up to there. All three ground wires are shared in the same port, but DIN or data lines are split between the three Ds, five, six, and seven. Lastly, to wire in our little 64 down here, 
we're going to take the data out from the first 64 and wrap it around into the other 64 LED matrix. So when you're all done, you should have essentially this wiring set up. Now we're not going to use either of these data outs because we're not going to feed off of anything else. I could have, because it still would have been within the confines to do this, fed from this out into the LED strip because it is only 30 more LEDs. It still would have been under the 255. I chose to wire it separately. I may wire it together at some point. All right, now let's use that diagram I just showed you and we can take a look at the rig. You can see here, here's one of two 64 LED matrix. Now this one's got, this is the side that just has the data coming in. On the other side, there's a data in and a data out. That data out runs to right here. You can see here there's power coming in and that's the USB to the PC. Under here we have the 255 LED matrix. And as you can see, the data on one side is not being used. The auxiliary power runs right out the middle and we have the data on the far side connected to the Arduino board. All right, I know the rig looks a little rough, but I'm kind of mocking things up, trying to decide what I do and don't like before I start building the permanent enclosure. That includes how I'm gonna build these ambient lights into project boxes, and there's a whole plan for that as well. Um, but ultimately, like the point is right now, I wanted you guys to kind of see how the whole thing's wired up. Now let's take a look at how to code this. All right, now if you watched the previous tutorial, this is gonna look very familiar to you. Or if you've been to Electro Noobs, because this is the Electro Noob code, but slightly modified. In the initial code, it identifies number of LEDs as 255. We've added in two more lines, LEDs one and LEDs two, also identifying 255 LEDs. Now, not every strand has 255, only the matrix is that high. But if you try to identify the number of lights by the pins, things don't work and they don't come on. So the only way to actually make this work and trick the system is by saying there are 255 LEDs on each DIN line. Now, the data pins or the DIN lines are identified. You would normally just see pin five I've added six and seven. This allows it to know that it's gonna send the lighting signal to two additional DIN wires. And the last part of the code that you need to modify is the fast LED add light line. You're gonna add two additional lines for LEDs one and two. So basically you're just replicating the code three times so that it works for each DIN pin. It's actually very simple copy and paste. If you use the Electro Noob lighting code, you should be able to do this no problem with just adding those few lines in. All right, so once you've got all that wired up, you're ready to go into SimHub and turn on your ambient lighting. So for most of you, you're not gonna see the ambient lighting option. When you first go into the menu, you're gonna have to go to your settings and over here to plugins and activate the ambient lighting plugin. Once you do that, you're gonna select the comm, so the USB port that your ambient lighting's plugged into. The number of LEDs currently on the strand, and then you can adjust your brightness. Now, if you go over here to edit layout, this is where most of the work's actually done. You can see over here on the right, it identifies the number of side LEDs. So if you're talking left and right, if you have 60 LEDs, so 30 on the left, 30 on the right, you're going to identify this as 30 because it's going to double it. As you can see, I have 30 going down my left, 30 going down my right. Over here, you're going to see the bottom or top count, depending on which one you choose to use. As you can see on the little camera down below, mine's set to the top. And as I move this white box around on the screen, you can see the light follows it. Now, in order to set it up to do that, all you have to do is adjust these little boxes. You want to adjust where your lighting's starting from left or right, as you can see right here. 
and once you do that it's just a matter of coming in and adjusting brightness this is that auto light dark or auto or experimental that i was talking about in testing on the sim rig i was using experimental here on my gaming desktop i'm just going with light for right now um, and really where you start to dial it in is right here in luminosity you can see how that impacts the lighting differently if I adjust light to dark. Now I'm only adjusting because I'm set to light I can only do adjustments here doing dark settings you're not going to see them unless you switch over to dark. And in gamma correction you can also see that same effect take place. You can also go with more or less color. I set my minimum color to zero, it goes up from there, and if you set to grayscale, then you'll pretty much just get a white light that follows with no color in it. Um, I'm still up in the air on how I feel between having just white lighting or having colored lighting in the sim rig. I typically stick with grayscale or gray level, but I do go back and forth, and more recently I'm experimenting more with the colors and trying to dial it in with that. Because I've noticed, especially in the night runs, uh, the color has a big impact on the cockpit. All right, so you guys might have noticed in SimHub that initially my number of LEDs was set to 257. I just want to specify, SimHub will not pick up your Arduino board and utilize the lights if the Arduino board's coded for more than 255 lights. You can turn up SimHub as far as you want. It doesn't really matter it just isn't going to pick it up if you don't code according to 255 lights so anything beyond that I don't know why it lets you go beyond it I have yet to figure out how to get it to work with more than 255 lights so if any of you guys are using this there's not a lot of information out there if you've got it to work through coding let me know in the comments also if you guys have any questions about this i'm usually pretty good about responding to comments i'm happy to help you out if i didn't explain something well enough let me know i will respond to my comments and i'll help you guys the best i possibly can that being said that's it for this video i'll see you guys next time we're going to tour around the game room the rig i've got some upgrades i'm going to be doing to the game room and a pretty big plan and surprise to drop for the rig coming soon